Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Whip Finish Wednesday. We've got a very, very, very special guest joining Katie and I tonight. And no, it's not Misha, although she probably will stop by and say hello. What are you doing, Mr. DeMuth? I don't know. I just thought I would say a welcome Whip Finish Wednesday episode. That's right. That's right. What's up, Steve and Ken? There's Ken B, our buddy from Australia, and Chris, Mr. Chris Harris. It's good to see you guys hopping on here and everyone over there, old ads over on Instagram. Hello, hello. What's up, Gary? Jeff, you haven't missed much yet other than the intro from John Christopher and um, Blazing Outdoors, Truman. Uh, so we've got a few different, uh, actually, I just realized you've been staring at the fly. Katie, we switch it over to the other camera, please? I didn't realize that we weren't on. There we go. So try it again. Uh, hello and welcome to Whip Finish, a Whip Finish Wednesday episode. That's right. Welcome to Whip Finish Wednesday episode number, what are we on, Katie? 5,698B. Yes, that sounds... Something like that. Mm -hmm. Wow, cool. Um, well, as you saw a second ago, we had a nice little purple ant in the vise, and that is probably the fly we're going to start with. And then we're going to move over to Lance Egan's Bionic Ant version 2.0. And then we're going to move to a parachute ant. All three are pretty simple flies with um, not a whole lot of required materials. There's Nan and Jimmy and Josh. And Jeff saying hello. You got to make sure you interrupt me and say hello, Jeff. Hello, Nan. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Nan. And <laughs> who else? Whoever you see. That's and that was Nan's Nan. Jimmy, Josh, Jeff. Oh, hello, Rally Benchwork, uh, Josh Riston, Jimmy Roop, and Equus Nan. That's right. And Lidrin. Oh. And lid rig. Lid rig. So lid rig does this stuff, right? This is one of the things he does. We've got right right here, this big magnet here. See how it says lid rig? Mm -hmm. That's what lid rig does. Hi, and and clipper. That's right. So Jeff wants to go fishing with you again. That Rowley bench work, Rowley bench work is from, he's the guy, the, the guy with the big beard remember, up in the Smokies. Mm -hmm. Tell him what you were doing a few weeks ago. I caught my first wild try at trout ever in the Smoky Mountains by myself. Yeah, all by yourself on the fly with your moon moonlit fly rod. Yes. So yeah. anyway, Gary said, uh, oh, are you going to do a rematch with Gary in Atlanta? Um, I don't know. I think you get destroyed. Oh, he thinks you get destroyed. destroyed. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Well, um, I'm going to start off by showing you all a quick tri trick, and John Christopher is going to sit with us and watch, but a uh, quick trick on tying a blood knot. Um, blood knot's one that I use all the time when I'm Euro nymphing. Um, I like it better than a um, double or triple surgeons. It's just one of those things that for me, uh, I feel, what's up? Oh, John Christopher, you got to Say good good evening, Troy. Good evening, Troy. And what did Josh? Josh was just tying with his daughter earlier tonight. It's good to see the future generation picking up the hobby. That's right. Hello, Mr. Collins. So um I personally like the uh the blood knot uh for when I'm connecting two lines, and I used to use the triple surgeons all the time. And then one of our guide buddies said, you know, if you ever if you ever got hooks and stuff on one end and you need to add line or take line away, you need to connect two lines. They, uh, they suggested you're going to have to tie a blood knot, not a, a triple surgeon's knot because you've got all this junk down here. So you need to, uh, to know how to, how to tie it. And I just, you know, when, when it comes to tying them and, and doing both sides, it was just kind of a pain. So it's not going to cinch down nice and tight with the rope, but I'm going to show you, um, my cheat trick here. So Katie's got, Katie switches around here. All we've got are our two, a piece of rope, our two ends. So I'm going to pull out, just cross them like this. We've got a, a somewhat short end here and a longer end here. And I'm kind of exaggerating the longer end because it is so thick. 
And I'll, all I'm going to do is I'm going to do three, go around three times. One, two, three. Now, usually with 5X, I'll do five times. 6X, I'll do six times. Um, but really, I could probably barely get away with one time here. So here's, here's the trick. Once you get your three done, take your finger like this and hold it here and just keep going. One, two, three. So now I've got three turns on this side, three turns on this side. Put my my far, far tag in here. Put my near tag in here. And then this is where I said it probably won't cinch down, but we'll see. She can't work as a hair tie, literally. Literally. It probably needs to be a hair tie right now because my hair is somewhat all over the place. There we go. And hi, you very uh dick all yep okay so there we go there's our our um blood our blood knot there that's some it's not cinched down perfectly but you get the get the idea of that so i'm going to do try to do it one more time with this lighter material but more like mono and we'll um see how it works here see if you can see it we'll move this out of the way so you can see so we're going to do the same thing so when i make my own leaders yep can it work as a hair tie i don't that's what john christopher just said sorry um so cross it over okay we'll leave this end kind of long but but this end we're this is where we're going to do all of our knot tying so just go one two three four take your finger push it grab it one, two, three, four. Take our tag in, stick it up through the hole we made. Pinch. This tag in, put it down here. Now I've got it. I use my mouth to grab onto it. You go like that. Pull it. Pull it tight. You wet it. You can see it better here. Wet it. Pull tight. And now we've got our our blood knot done. So for me, that's just a little bit easier to do than. Um, there we go. <clears throat> then uh, the other ways I've seen doing it. There is, like, if you can have a tool, there is a little bit easier way, but you got to keep up with another tool. So I like doing it that way. Um, hopefully that, uh, Brian, that's rad. I, I, just practice it. It's easier for me. But, you know, the easiest knot is one you know how to tie. So try that out. If you like it, great. If you don't, then no problem. No problem at all. Right, buddy? Yeah. Say, that's rad. That's rad. That's right. So we are tying ants tonight. So let's um, let's get to tying, shall we? Oh, before we get to tying, we tied Amy's aunt, the Amy's aunt, last week. Mm -hmm. And Katie has, there she is. She has got a few um, or a couple pictures to share, one from Jimmy Roop and one from Ken B. So take so it away. If you want to share a picture of a fly that you tied or a fly that you tied where you got the idea from the show, just tag us on the picture on Instagram by putting at DeMuth Fly Fishing on the picture. You simply go to new post, put your picture on there and click tag people and then put at DeMuth Fly Fishing. And here is... Um, Jimmy Roop shared a picture of Amy's aunt from last week that he tied. Very cool. A little bit, I mean, definitely out of the flies that we tie on the show. This one had a lot of, of materials and a lot of stuff going on. So if, if you guys didn't get around to putting one of these together, I totally get it. Because that's, that's a, a lot of stuff. Um, but a very effective fly. And we also had a couple from Ken B. He said that he he did a couple rounds of these before he finally got some that he was um, happy with. And I think that I can understand why. Those look great. Those look really nice. Absolutely That's great. So, yeah. So um, thanks again to Jimmy Roop and to Ken B for sharing your pictures 
um, with us this week. You can also email them to us if you'd like at um, demuthflyfishing at gmail.com. So thanks again, guys. And now let's tie some more ants. All right. For your pleasure. Thank you, Katie. Well, hey, Dan. Good to see you finally hopping on live. Not finally, but welcome back. And it's so bad. It's been so long since I've actually like paid a whole lot of attention to Instagram. I've got to put my glasses on to read it. And BNST John, um, yes, I kept rapping the same way. And I'm surprised you could see the way I was doing that on Instagram. Um, if you can come over and check us out on YouTube, you'll be able to see there's four cameras and lots more to see and hopefully be able to hear better as well. Um, but speaking of which, we will zoom in to what we're going to tie tonight. Um, so this is the one we're going to start with now. And I'll bet someone here knows the name of this pattern. It's nothing fancy. It's just like, this is just a basic plain Jane ant. Um, all you need is some, uh, some sort of dry fly dubbing. Um, I'm using K-Pock. You want to switch over yeah, to Yeah, let's the, look at it. <laughs> so I'm using K-Pock right now, um, or on, on this one in purple. Um, a little uh, poly yarn on top and hackle that thread and that's it. The uh, the hook I'm going to use on all these. Oh my goodness. So we have yet another special guest. Um, the hook I'm going to use is the A-Rex Freshwater 503 in size 16. I like tying them a little bit small. Um, uh, when we tied the bionic ant, uh, Lance is typically tying those. I don't want to say typically when we look at his recipe, it's 12s and 14s. For me, I'm more like 16 and 18 for the East Coast anyway. Um, but for an attractor, I'm, I have no doubt the 12 will work here um, as, as well as everywhere. But I've kind of settled on the 16 being just a good all around size. So, with that said, that's what we're going to start off with. Drop that here. And guys, feel free to ask any questions. And John Chrisser, if you have a question, you ask as well, okay? Sounds good. Sounds good. And if you can hear something, that is Misha chewing, devastating, uh, putting some putting a hurt on a bone. So we'll do this one in black just to keep it kind of regular. Regulary. Oh, there, and there she is. Say, what's up? She doesn't even realize she's on, on the TV. I know. She so, just has no clue. No, none at all. Misha. Don't get her riled up or she'll not start running through. Purple people eater, according to... Purple people eater. Is that the name of the... Yeah, Chris. Is, we got the it's Misha the Misha cam. cam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is that the name of what I'm going to tie, Nan? We'll do this on black to make it even more confusing. I call it the purple ant with parachute. And this one's it took me a really long time to come up with that name. Mike Phillips said, What fly did JC use to catch his first wild chat? I don't know. You don't know. I don't know what it's called. I don't remember what it was. I, I think it was a it was a yellow Sally. Did you catch it on the dry or did you catch it on the net? Dropped off. The dry I caught like one on the dry and then because I missed a bunch, but and then I cut a bunch on the nip. Bunch on the nip, so it was a little size 18 or 20 CDC pheasant tail. Mm -hmm. So size 18 or 20 CDC pheasant tail. All right, so we're going to grab some black k -pock. So we're just using oh, this right here, separate fly k -pock. And uh, all I'm doing right now is just making two balls. Two balls, the one in the back is going to be like football shape. I know this year, I see are like, yep, we know what an ant looks like. That's all I'm doing, just making the rear portion of an ant and then the front portion of an ant. Chris rear, said purple doesn't work. It doesn't. Chris will know. It doesn't That's work. right. Purple is worthless. It's terrible. It's terrible. Just leave it at home. That's why we, we try to give everyone bad advice. So when they go out, they leave some fish for us. Mm -hmm. That's the trick. All right. <clears throat> so I've got my thread ready. Unfortunately, I started my thread too far down. So way I'm going to start this is I'm going to um, just start with a ball right here. 
Now I'm going to bring it back to kind of make it uh, football. I'll bring it forward. I want to beef it up a little bit. Just like this. Okay. So we got our front, our rear section done. We'll come up and do the same thing. I'm telling you, this is this is rocket science here. So I said this one is a simple one. This one. You're going to get your homework done. Tell everyone bye. He's, he says he's going to go do his homework. Well, well I got it. He's already got it done. And he that's just, a good reason. That's a good reason. He to had him. it done so quick. I was like, well, before we go to bed, I want you to show me what the thing is. So he's going to lay it out so I can look at what I'm done. That's the plan. He did a YouTube many years ago on the ant. Oh. Whoa. Bye-bye, Misha. Okay, you so. Startled her. There you go, that. Okay. All right. I'll put a little thread base in. Back up. Now all I want to do is, so see how we've got our rear and front section? Super easy, right? I'm going to take a little uh, poly yarn, some sort of, some sort of fiber, uh, like you'd use a parachute post. I just, see how I just split it right here. So I've got it, see how it's there. Put it right behind the that first ball and bring it back. So it, if you want to split the wing, you can. If you want to make it to where like you want to run some, some thread through here to make it to where it's split wings like that, you can. I think just having it as a, um, a single wing is fine. I'll wait until after I have my hackle tied in before I um, <clears throat> before I trim it. You can see we're looking looking pretty good so far. Okay, so the hackle I'm using, I, I think on Lance's pattern he likes the um, the kosher brown, I believe, and the kosher brown I had was too big, so I've got this really pretty furnace that's more black than it is brown, just really dark furnace. Um, on this uh, this heritage cape here, so you can look up real close. Switch over to the hook. Get acid flood. I I have not. Um, I have not, Dan. Let's see if we get that. There you go. So you can see how it's got that. It's almost like a speckling of brown and black. So I thought that'd be perfect for this fly. Um, so I've got a roughly a size 18 for this. Um, how pretty it is for this size 16 hook. And this is one that, you know, because I'm going to cut the bottom of it off, if I undersized it a little bit, that'd be okay. Sorry, if I oversized it, that'd be okay. If I was going to make an air, I'd want to shoot long. So I'm just stripping the bottom of the stem off. So you can see I've got stem cleaned. Now I'm going to capture it like this. I might cut off a little too much. There we go. Yeah, see, that's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be, but that's okay on this pattern. Hopefully, the stem doesn't sit to what, buddy? Do you have your math set out? Okay. I didn't realize it was almost 9.30 already. So I'm just going to upset my mom and brush my teeth. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Good night. Good night, buddy. Everyone say good night, John Christopher. <laughs> All right. So we've got that wrapped in there, and we'll cut off this bottom part there. You can see how that, that looks right now. Like I said, that is a little bit longer than I was wanting, but I will make it work. Honey ants work here too. Well, I've got that's why I got Katie. She makes everything sweet. I don't know where you oh, come. Oh, Gary, I'm telling you what, where do you get this guy? Okay, so we'll put a little whip finish here. There we go. And you see, I caught a few of the fibers. I guess I should probably do some more different color shirt. 
And then I'm going to flip it upside down. I'm going to fit my scissors in here. Bam. So you can see I've got a nice little footprint there with the um, the hackle. It's the anchulator. That's what we were going to come up with. Uh, Katie came up with this last night. Maybe about... Um, coming up with like a stimulator ant. We'll call it an anchulator. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. Jimmy Ribbon. Okay, I'm working on his suggestions. The yowler or the better. It looks easy enough. Yeah, this one's pretty simple. So just chop off the bottom. Like I said, that hackle is just a touch long. Um, wings, wings there. So we're going to do something very similar with, um, and I will put a drop of head cement there. And we use the Freshwater 503, size 16. The biggest thing is you don't want a long, for this one anyway, this pattern, I do not want a long hook shank. Um, get my hook in there. It looks like it's, that looks straight to you all anyway. It looks crooked to me. Um, and yeah, it's it's easy enough. You know, yeah. for a flock? That, that is a simple one. No, yeah, I mean, as far as like one that would require, you know, a dubbing body and a little bit of shape on it and hackle and stuff, it's it's not mm -hmm. too not too terrible. And we're going to show you the one. This is a different pattern. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd use Dry Magic or uh, um, Aquel, one of the two, Dan. And, uh, oh, shoot, I think... James or someone just asked a question. So the the all these hackle, some sort of like poly yarn and um, dubbing are, are all we're going to use, except for this pattern. This is Lance's bionic ant. And I'm using the, these Wopsy foam ant bodies. His pattern calls for, um, this is the one, one crazy material, Ken. Um, uh, they look like little magic wands, like, you know, in the magic show. Yeah, that's right. But like where you shake, like where they shake it and it like, it like kind of like falls in half. And then, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He calls for an extra large or large. I just had medium. So, you know, I push you guys and encourage you guys to use what you got. So he's also tied on size 12 or 14. And uh, so I'm tied on 16. So we're going to go with the, the medium size. So, so what if you don't have that? What can you? I just go with one of the other patterns that you're doing, that we're doing. I mean, you, if you want to, you could just cut a a two millimeter piece of uh, foam, cut it two millimeters wide, so you have a little square. But for the most part, just tie what you're doing. Um, yeah, it can tie the first pattern or the last pattern, and you'll be fine. But uh, this is a this is a super easy pattern. So I do on this one. I like to cut off just a little bit of that tip. And I've got my thread not right behind the hook eye, but close. And I want the the um, mat the matchstick, the white part to stick out half as much as the black. So when I when I put my thread wrap over, see how there's twice as much black showing as white? Pull up, pull up, pull up. That's my front of my ant body. Bring it back. Don't bring it. I don't know if Lance says this or not, and he might tell. He probably tell me I'm completely wrong. Don't bring it all the way back to the back, um, unless you got a really short short hook shank. Well, some some people are saying you can go big with this one. Absolutely, carving a three section need a longer hook. Absolutely, it's a killer small pattern tied big. Yeah, I I I am positive, one hundred percent. That uh, that size fourteen and size twelve will will absolutely work, um, hundo percento. I'm just tying smaller because we don't have because he doesn't know how to, to tie it. anything. Yeah, because I'm a terrible tie. I don't know what I'm doing. So the the one that I posted today I was kind of trying out something. Really, I couldn't find this material, but when I posted today, I, I had. Um, this the daddy long legs and black here we go that's what i use but i fit i, I feel like i should go with more of the original so i'm going with this is the super floss are those the really thin ones super floss okay. so this is a, a little bit thicker 
Just get two pieces. And uh, tag that in just like this. Oh, excuse me. Pardon. Almost messed up. Hey, Ken, good luck with your ants. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Katie. Take another piece of that poly yarn. Tied off right in the front. Another reason I like time a little bit bigger, or excuse me, a little bit smaller. And showing you all how to do it because it's if you if you all can tie the size 16, then I promise you can tie a size 12. So you see how I doubled it over just like I did the one with the um the the one with the dubbing. Exact same way, but then one of the different the main difference is um, I'm gonna tie the tie the legs in. So I got my super floss here, I cross it over. See how it's locked in there, or locked one rack in. Here we go. See how it looks there. Bring, bring the thread back up. I'm going to tack this in, maybe. Put a couple in there. Pull it around. And I do have one fiber. Take it out. Looks like I did. Hot dang. Okay. Okay, pull this up a little more. Now we're good. So you see, we've got our, our little legs there. It's a pattern a few months ago, size 14, size so question, but who met? This is, um, and look at, look on Fly Fish Food site. They've got a real, they've got Lance Tyne, this exact one, and he's got the, um, the exact materials and, and, uh, and backup materials. This is the larva lace super floss. You can just look up super floss. It's um just black um black seed leg material. But I would look before you ordered anything, just look at the fly fish food site. They'll they'll have the exact stuff to order because like the regular silly legs are not going to be just right for the pattern. Um daddy long legs in my opinion because that's what I posted today a little bit small. And then really all we're going to do is tie in the same packle. Hopefully this is going to be the right size. And although I'm pretty sure it's not because I just used it. Oh, Jimmy said that Smitty Slovox did the ant. Yeah. Did we have that one? I don't think we got that one. I don't think we got that one. We've got one unopened somewhere around here. Yes. That, if you'll remind me, that will be, unless we get vetoed, that'll be what we're going to tie next week. Ooh, mystery box. No, no, no. It's not mystery. I know exactly what it is. Oh, he's fancy. He puts a sticker on the side and tells you what it is. But you don't have to look. Well, I don't have to open it, but I already know what it is. You probably used to open the mystery dum dum suckers and like then like wrap it back up when you didn't like it. Oh, honey, I, I, well, you got to taste them first, right? Yeah, and I mean some of the colors you had to taste. You weren't you weren't sure. If you don't like them, then put them back. Pre enjoyed. Okay, so we got our. Our little job here. I haven't trimmed the 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 post or the wing, and I haven't trimmed the the foam either. Do we get my wing out of that? So we're just gonna do the same thing we did a second ago. Lance says put three, so that's not quite one, two, three. So we'll end it. End it here. Okay. Pull tight. There we go. I want a wet finish, and this will be done. 
It kind of looks like a little man with a hat on and his arms, and he's like flying. Mm hmm. Katie, mm -hmm. Google how many legs an ant has. Oh, they have six. Okay. Okay, it says six. I mean, I guess it, it, it depends on, I think six, six or eight, but don't forget the antenna on top. That one's always important. So we're going to trim this off the bottom, just like, just like that first time. See how we trim that off? Okay. I'm going to trim these like that. So kind of, kind of short. I mean, don't like pretty much all insects have six legs. No. Okay. Trim that off a little bit. See how it looks. It's looking fine. Make this uh, wing just a shade longer than the hackle, like that. Trim this off, trim that off, trim a little more off. And we'll make the legs, I'm gonna go shade longer than the, uh, than the rear of the fly. So the, we'll shrink these to pinch. There we go. So my front legs are shorter, my rear legs, not by much, but um, and my ant body's up there like so. Hello from Delaware. Hello, Kintel64. We got Gary Barnes free falling, but see Delaware, so on, Delaware, that's so exotic. I know, you know? isn't it? Ooh. I'm buying a work truck from Delaware right really? now. Really? Yeah. And the problem is the guy wants to sell it for five thousand dollars less than a brand new one, and I'm like, well, if I gotta drive away to Delaware to get it, and it's two years old with thirty thousand miles on it, like five I don't grand think Delaware's that far. Farther than Johnson City. Well, it's farther than Kentucky. Yeah, it is farther than Kentucky. Um, so <clears throat> as you can see, the the um, the silhouette on it, or we, there you go, see the silhouette on it. We've got the the legs, and that's kind of why I'm on these smaller sides, I think if I went down to an 18, I'd probably sick, I'd probably go to the daddy long legs, a little bit smaller leg. But um, but that hackle being cut off is gonna help it ride flush just the way you want it. Um, and uh, got a little little wing there, split the wings apart on the pattern rather than the clump. And this one I was saying, um, Steve, on the on the first one, if you want to pull them apart and split them, no problem. Pull them apart, split them. This one, same, same way, like in this case, it's going to be more like a, um, it's going to use more like a, a cider for us to see, um, as well as little white on the, the front of the post. Once you split them, you're, you're definitely still helps the visibility for the angler, but now you're <laughs> going for I love the, your um, glasses on your hair. It looks, it's, a, it's a look, honey. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just noticed that. It's a look. I like it. I don't, well, um, Love flying it. ant, Steve. That's what I was trying to come up with. Uh, so, yeah. So, you can... Uh, so, but either way, I mean, I, I think that's one of those things. The cousin it look. Is that, I don't Chris, know. Chris is saying cousin it. I, I'm not really sure. It's it's very... I don't think Unique. I've seen that this? one before. I, I, I have, might, might have started a new thing. I have not seen that before. So it's been a long helmet. It's been a long day, <laughs> and I got home or I, I, I came home. I, wa I watered, Garth. I mowed the yard, but I lowered it a little bit. The 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 mower, it's just a push mower. So I, it took me forever to mow because I was dumping the bag out five million times. And I came in, ate, took a shower, and I didn't feel like putting my hair up. So I'm sorry. No, no, Shoot it's me. like I said, it's it's a look. It's something. You know? It is something, that's for sure. What are we going to tie next? Yes, we're going to tie an ant. Ant, honey. version you know, number three. Purple one. So, but on the uh, the Lance Egan bionic ant. So, I made a few material substitutions as well as the size. I think depending on where you're from, there's a good chance you probably ought to tie 12s and 14s. Um, do whatever you, you're going, you're comfortable with, whatever makes you happy. Um, but if you have any questions on what materials you can or can't use, just check out the fly fish food site. Cause that'll, that'll be much more 
a little like one of those goons in Slapshot. I don't know if I've seen Slapshot, <laughs> but you're calling me a goon. Oh, <laughs> I was thinking like Slayton Garth. Was, yeah. Hey, like honey. It. You're going to make your mouth bleed if you chew on that anymore. She's coming over to stick up for her father. No, she's just checking on me. Well, she's she's like, not, she one of the Hanson brothers. The Hanson. I thought she said, thought she said Han like, handsome. Like, mm, mm, bop. Yeah, not handsome. Handsome. All right, so we're doing the same thing, except we're using purple. This stuff. When I think it was last year when Silver Black came out with their fluorescent colors, I was like, thank goodness these things are bad to the bone. Um, so we're just the oh Misha. Misha. Did your guys hear I hope you guys didn't hear burp? that? She came in here with Bleh. it was uh it was a burp. Yep, I see it, Misha, right here in my La Caracha, La Caracha. Yeah, maybe it's Axl Rose. Like if if you had a headband on, kind of just like placed just so on your forehead. Well, maybe you ought to cover it up with a headband or something. I don't know. No, I, I like it. I think it's you've got your own thing going there. So we are tying an ant again. The, those glasses are hard to wear. Like if like when I put them on, I have to like, position them kind of like halfway under my hair, halfway not. Like if I don't have my hair in a ponytail, they're kind of, they're a little tricky if you got your hair down. Mm -hmm. but, and Gary can relate. Totally. This one a little bit hey, bigger. Let's get it down hey. just a little bit. We're going to get girl. down. Good girl. Okay. Good okay, girl. we can flip it back to the to the hook. Yeah, Barry, you made me laugh. Thank you for that. So we got our rear ball done. We're having a ball tonight. And now we're going to do the same thing, except do a front ball. Hey, this is looking very much like the first one. This is going to be a parachute dance. And I bet you never guessed how I'm going to do this. And for those of you all that haven't been watching for more than a few months, you probably haven't seen me do a parachute. So... This might be kind of new for those of y'all that have watched it. Then you're like, yep, I can bet you what this part's going to be. So we're just going to throw a little second ball in the front here. I think she needs to go outside. Run. Get on the hook. That's fine. Run her outside. Then. Definitely don't want her to have to lose it or. That should be good. I'll pull it a little bit off because I don't want to overdo. So now we got our two balls, right? So exactly the way we did the um, the first fly, but as opposed to um, as opposed to gosh, what was it saying? Putting a wing going back or anything, we're going to throw a parachute right behind the. Um, right behind the front segment. So all I do is I take my um, material, drop it down right where I want it, so you can see right where it is here. See it? I'm gonna put three wraps. I've already got one wrap of thread. I go one, two, keeping the thread tight this entire time. Pull this back, one, two, three. So there's three wraps in the middle, three wraps in the front, I don't go. One, two, three. See, so I've done, I've done nine wraps. It takes more time to tell you than it does actually do it. There's nine wraps of thread pulled up, and my thread has stayed almost to breaking strength tight the whole time. So one, yep, one, son of a gun. One. <laughs> Two, three. Okay. So now we got the our parachute tied in. If you want to, you could go ahead and tie the uh, the hackle in now. And one strand of crystal flash. One on each side is an underwing. I can I've got some crystal. We'll, we'll throw some on here a sec, just for you, Gary. Um, so if you want to go and wrap it up, you can. So we'll go one. I'm gonna count, but see how 
my rats are not ever laughing. There, there's no white post material coming through, just side by side wraps going up. This little motion of pinching and holding, pinching and holding, pinching and holding over and over is just something you got to practice and get it where it's super easy, super quick. This is a size 16, not a huge fly, not a small fly. Um, just kind of normal. That's that's pretty simple. There's one little bump in that, but you can see that's pretty pretty good looking um, parachute post. So Gary wanted uh, how do you want? There's one strand of crystal flash, one on each side as an underwing. Okay, let's grab. I had some right here that we that would be okay. I don't think I have any purple, but I've got. I know I just set it down. This will be fine. Just one string. Let's go four. Let's go four total. So in this fly in pink, somebody was catching browns near three dollar bridge a few weeks ago. Don't tell anyone. We don't like good grief. We don't want anyone that's going to be around three dollar bridge in the next few weeks, do we, Katie? No, but there was an interesting article in the New York Times today about the trout. In Montana, if anybody reads the newspaper anymore, you should check it out. Crystal Pearl. I'm looking forward to reading that tonight, honey. So the New York Times did an article on trout fishing. It sounded pretty devastating to me. It wasn't. I wouldn't say that it was good news. What would you say? Would you say it was bad news? Well, I, I would say that it's about how warmer temperatures are affecting the trout population. Okay. So there we go. Now we got a little a Gary Barnes thing. I'm gonna leave these long so I can pull them out as I'm as I'm going. Cut this off. Any other suggestions? Any other <laughs> always use one on each side. Fish well, hey, it is my fly, but you're the you're the the baker tonight or the there we go. So now we get one on each side, just like that. All right. So I'm going to strip off some of my fibers here off a of feather. Same one. I'm just using the same one. So we don't have to keep going back to the thing. Yes, it was about, it was, I think part of the title was zombie trout. Oh, okay. Correct. So that was so Jimmy's seen it. Yeah. Um, are you talking to me, Chris, about big hole, or are you talking to Jimmy, or who, who you talking to? Okay. So my thread right now is on the hook point side of the uh, the post. Hold my uh, feather with the with the dull side facing the post. Um, bear stem, one wrap over, pull it up. So I've got got it to the right height. I think I might have pulled it a little too far up, but that's okay. Bring this up. What I don't want to do is pull super, super tight and leave a big dent. And also don't want to stack up a whole bunch of thread wraps. Pull this down. Yeah, Chris, I think that that, that was the river that it was talking about. One. Should do one wrap here. Now we're good. Boom, 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 boom. Looking good so far. Yep, looking good. So articles this summer about the decline of the big hole. Excuse me on the drink of water. All right, so let's see if you can see that okay. Yep, it looks fine. So I'm going to get my, my post straight. I'm going to pull this so it's not in the way. So I like holding, I like moving, reposition my parachutes like so. And I take my crystal flash, pull it out of the way, get my first wrap in here, make sure that my first wrap or my second wrap goes directly underneath, underneath my first one. I'm just stacking, getting these on here. It's really however much you want to put on there. 
Don't try to go all the way down, but that's something like that's pretty good. So now let's take our thread. We go under the hackle, but over the stem. I think I might have just messed something up. It needs to go. Pull this down. My crystal flash was in the way. So I didn't get it out of the way. Pull my crystal flash back. Oh, yeah. Just like that. So you can see what, how we're looking now. Pull off that hackle stem. Oh, and I got, I could probably get one more fly on that. That was three flies of one feather off a cape, size 18. So that's two years. National Park closed. The fishing because of low water. He was just cussing me. Oh, because of the, the, um, Crystal Flash. I don't know if did I, did I capture it? Because I thought I did for a second, but I think I'm okay. All right, so we've got this in there nice and good. It's looking okay. You're pretty good, if I do say so. But I'm going to pull this around. Normally, I would, pair, I would whip finish on the post, but because I don't want to whip finish around these things too, I'm going to grab like this, pull up, pull my hackle down, or pull it out of the way. And I can put it back. This is just a way to not cheat at all. Just a lot of a lot of people would finish on the eye and just kind of bypass the uh, the parachute. That and just for the fun of it, we'll clip this a little bit longer. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to butt my scissors up to the hook bin. Do that so we got a little. That little wing, Gary will be like, that's way too short. You have long. You did it wrong. I have to retie it. Well, probably. I'll probably mess it all up. He likes to keep you on your toes. That's right. Sorry, I crashed your party. The other Michael, no. You did not crash my party. That I, I swear I think that's the first time that I've met you in person, though. Um, I was out fishing, and at the end of the day, we, I was dropping my buddy off. And we we're just sitting there chatting and Michael comes up and starts talking to us. And I'm like, who is this dude? And he's like, this is Michael. I was like, oh, now I remember who you are. My bad. So I um, apologize. Now I'll, I'll be better equipped next time. But cool little uh, little parachute pattern. Gary, I like the, I mean, when all else fails, so a little crisp flash on there. And you got a nice little, nice little pattern. It's always fun doing something on your toes like that and kind of switching around. Um, I'm definitely glad that I cut two of those crystal pieces of crystal flash off. So I only have two because if I was trying to whip finish and top wrap hackle and everything around four pieces of crystal flash, did we? Well, that now I feel terrible. My bad. I'm sorry, Michael. Um, but it was good to see you again then. It was awesome to see you. Good patterns every old half. Rotten tree hanging around streams are full of big black carpenter ants. They fall in the water from overhanging trees. Yes, sir. Yes, 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 sir. So um, give, give any of these ant patterns. Or if you've got an ant pattern you love, we would love to see it. Now, I'm going to give you something. So you can't laugh anymore. I took my glasses off. Um, we would love to see you guys, um, your patterns. Uh, if you don't have one, I just gave you three that you can tie. But if there, if, if Steve, if you like tying the big ones for carpenter ants, or I think um, John Collins is on earlier talking about the big ones. We'd love to see your big ones. We would love to see, uh, see your little ones. Love to see what you will spin up. So tag us. Um, no, not. Well, yeah, I think my Michael, are you the, were you from Connecticut? Is that where you were? He was in the military up North and then he came back down. So not hundred percent sure. Um, but guys, we really appreciate y'all hanging out with us this evening. It's been a blast. We're getting done in less than one hour. We started late and we're ending early. We got three flies tied, a knot tied. Misha is here to say hello. Everything's going well. Um, three separate patterns tied even, honey. Can you believe it? 
Yes, I can believe it for sure. Misha, don't try to push your way through there. Um, so we oh, next week we're going to be tying. Not that one. Don't look. We're going to be tying the mini dungeon. So it's going to be Smitty's Flybox. The mini dunge. Mini dunge, that's right. And um, we also, so we're going to use the, the Smitty's Flybox to tie the. Um, Show them that flat Smitty's Flybox. That's what I was looking for. And you said, don't look. Well, you, I didn't know that you already looked. There it is. So this is not it. Oh, here, here it is. So, yep, mini dungeon. So we're going to tie next next week, and if we can get through this one relatively quick, then we'll tie a regular dungeon using Kelly Gallup's uh, recipe, because um, we'll be helpfully throwing those in a couple weeks. So that's what we're doing next week. We look forward to seeing everyone. I'll throw up a very cool John. I just got that box in the mail. All right. See you, Fud. Thank you, Mark, Chasing Feathers. We really appreciate you jumping on. Dan, awesome to see you. So, guys, thank you so much for chatting. We'd love to, to if you haven't subscribed to our little channel, we'd love it if you did. And um, if you have any questions or any requests or anything at all, next week might be the last time we go live for a little while because we'll be headed to Utah on the following Sunday. That's right. So thanks again, guys, and I'll turn it over to Katie to take us out. See you guys. Bye. Have a great weekend. Go tie some flies. See ya.